How can it be that someone that has been struggling with anxiety for eight years of his life turn into someone confident like me, become an entrepreneur at the age of 18, get an amazing girlfriend, make money online, perform very good at school and build a good looking muscular body. And that wasn't me for a very long time of my life. I was just obese, playing video games, running away from my problems. And this was the first time that I started. And you can see my body language that I wasn't confident at all. I didn't know what I was speaking about. I couldn't speak English, all of that. And I'm basically making this video to show my younger self how stupid he was. And maybe that you are just waiting to start, waiting to be confident, but you have to start right now. You maybe think you have to prepare more. You can't approach that girl right now. You can't study for that exam right now. You can't start your side hustle or your business right now. You can't go to the gym right now. You have to wait. Everything has to be perfect. Perfect conditions, perfect timeline. You don't have enough time. All of these excuses. I'm not ready yet. I will wait until the 1st of January, until New Year. It's all bullshit. And this wasted years of my life. And I saw so many people, like including myself, struggle with this issue. But the truth is that waiting to feel completely confident before taking action is a trap because you get confident by doing and that's what i will show you in this video how to take the first step get outside of your comfort zone and how to actually become confident and achieve your goals by doing there's a reason why i always say at the end of every single of my videos take action because without taking action you won't achieve anything in life you can consume all of the content in the world and read all of the books but if you're not applying that knowledge nothing will happen so i will show you how to break free from the confidence trap and start taking action, even if you don't have all of the answers yet, because you don't need them. And think about all of the opportunities that you have missed and that I have missed, the counters of parties that I've missed out on, or the great opportunities that I could have, just because I was way too scared and I didn't feel yet ready yet. I didn't expose myself to my fears. I was waiting for the perfect moment. But the truth is that tomorrow never comes. You might think, oh, once I have more time, I will start to work on this. Once I feel more confident, I will do this and this and this. That is a trap that I was in for so long. Nothing will happen until you work. Nothing will happen until you take the first steps. And this is like the first principle of my entire journey from being obese, addicted to video games, porn and junk food for five years and struggling with anxiety daily, having panic attacks in the morning to becoming the person that I am today was action. It was just simply doing it over and over again. And I didn't feel ready. Again, take a look at this video. Do you think I was confident? Do you think I was ready to record this video? This was one and a half years ago, and I got to the stage of talking confidently and having better English skills right now because I went through this process without feeling confident, and by doing, I got confident. Okay, so I really want you to understand this, and that's what I will tell you in this video. The confidence gap is basically a mental block where fear, self-doubt, and anxiety prevent you from taking action. Right? So you say, oh my God, I'm feeling anxious. No, I can't talk to that girl. I can't do the public presentation. I can't start the side hustle. I can't do this. I can't go to the gym. I can't possibly improve myself because you doubt yourself, because you've been conditioned by school and society to parents and you have all of these limiting beliefs inside of you that you think that you have to be um, confident before acting. Right? School is always telling you to prepare for every single test, that you have to study and study and study and then you can write the test. And then it just continues like the cycle of studying and writing a test, studying and writing a test, constantly preparing. Society is always telling you, yeah, you know, a lot of people have talent. A lot of people have, you know, like good genes, right? They have luck. They have, you know, some kind of unfair advantage that you don't have. No, it's all a lie. It's a lie that mediocre people tell you to stay stuck. And maybe your parents tell you, oh, no, you can't be sued as one side hustle. You can't uh, do this. You can't do that, right? You have to be confident first. You have to learn first. You have to study first. It's bullshit. And maybe you even tell that yourself. You think, oh, no, I can't approach that girl because right now, you know, I don't have a six pack yet. And, you know, I'm broke and she would never love me. You are rejecting yourself. You are rejecting yourself. You're holding yourself back by the beliefs that you have inside of your mind, by the thoughts that you put inside of your mind. You are holding yourself back. And I'm still struggling with this, but I was able to like override this process when I wake up in the morning, right? My mind is having like these automatic negative thoughts. And it's telling me, no, you can't record a video today because you're not feeling good. I'm like, okay, fuck, fuck the thought, fuck this belief. I will do it anyway. I didn't feel ready to record this video. I didn't feel ready. I was like, I can prepare more. I can, you know, like I can read another book on this. I can, you know, and maybe work on my social skills a bit more. No, 
it's not about like being perfect. It's just about taking action, right? Believing you need to feel confident before action makes this anxiety worse. Creating a cycle where you do nothing and your fear grows, right? So you know you should be doing something. But anxiety, fear, self-doubt, fear of failure is holding you back. And therefore you create like this distance between yourself and your goals, right? The worst feeling that you can have in your life is knowing what you have to do, but not doing it. It's knowing that you should go to the gym, but you don't go to the, to the gym. Knowing that you should work, but you don't work. Knowing that you should study, but you don't study because of your fears. And what happens then? You have a gap between your ideal self and the self that you are right now. And then the fear grows. The, the, the cycle begins to spin and spin and spin and the confidence gap becomes bigger. Right? Think about it. It's a paradox. You think you need to be confident and be prepared and ready to act. And therefore you don't act, which gives you more anxiety, making you think that you need to prepare more because you have more anxiety. And then you're just stuck in the cycle. It's a stupid belief that you need to feel confident before doing something. But it seems logical, right? It seems so logical. It seems like, right, it makes sense. Why would I have like, why would I record a video if I'm not confident? Because people won't like me and I don't speak well and I don't have nothing to offer. It seems logical, right? Why would I write a test if I haven't studied before? It seems logical. Because action feels easier when you're confident, right? You just feel, you feel the fear of stepping into uncertainty. You're like, okay, I'm having the test, but you know, I'm not ready yet. I don't want, I want to study more. And you think that when you study more, you will be ready to write the test and then you will perform better. And that makes you more confident because the uncertainty of the outcome is likely to be positive. That's all there is, right? When you have like a, like a, if, if you're a failure or you want to be a perfectionist, you basically scan your current skills. You, you scan your, your current capabilities and your current mood and your feelings, right? And you're like, I'm feeling anxious right now. My skills are not high enough. The likelihood of me achieving that outcome is quite low. And then you start to feel even more panic and panic and panic. And the main reasons for why you have this, first of all, your stupid limiting beliefs, right? And then five other things are perfectionism. Right? You might have very high expectations for yourself, making you afraid of making mistakes. Why is it stupid? Well, because you're just procrastinating, you're not taking action, and therefore you will never become perfect in the first place. Being scared of perfectionism makes no sense at all, because you only get better by taking action. But you don't take action because you fear not being perfect. The only way you can be, become perfect is by failing over and over again. Imperfect action leads to perfection. Maybe you have negative self-talk, right? You might constantly undermine you, telling you that you're not good enough or predicting the future, that you will fail, right? Or no, like, I can't do this because of X, Y, and that, right? Notice how when you have these thoughts inside of your mind, you always say, I can't because. You're basically justifying your own stupid behavior to yourself. You're trying to convince yourself, basically, that you can't do something, which is stupid. Why would you reject yourself? Why would you hold yourself back? This is not even your fault. It's not your fault. That's the worst thing of this all. Because you've been conditioned that way, again, by school, society, and parents. But if you want to be successful in life, and if you want to, you know, I'm not successful at anything, but I managed to override my anxiety and override my fear and act despite anxiety. And that's what you have to learn to do as well. Right? Maybe it's fear of failure. You might overly be focused on your fears, such as fear of rejection, failure, or embarrassment. Again, it makes no sense. Because if you don't act in the first place, nothing will happen. Or maybe new situations, right? If you haven't had much experience with something, it's natural to not feel confident. Again, <laughs> do you think I was confident when recording this? It was my first ever video, the first time speaking to the camera. Without doing this step first, I wouldn't be here right now. You wouldn't see this video. And my skills wouldn't have been as good as they are right now. Like, I'm not the best public speaker, you know? I sometimes stumble on my words. My English is not perfect. You know, I have like a German um, accent or whatever. But it's so much better. It's a hundred times better. Or maybe it's skill development. Confident often comes from being good at something. If you haven't developed the necessary skills, then you might feel like you can't take action, like you can't do something. And you wait for tomorrow and you wait for tomorrow. But the question is, how do we solve all of these problems? Your perfectionism, your negative self-talk, your fear of failure, your, your, your fear of new situations and your skill development. And how do you overcome the confidence gap? It's by taking action despite feeling anxious. If you take action despite your perfectionism, you will slowly become better and you will become more perfect at a thing, even though perfect is a goal that you can't reach. 
if you act despite negative self-talk, you, you, you will prove to yourself that you can do it and the negative self-talk will go away. You feel failure. Even if you do fail, you will realize it's not that bad. And if you don't fail, you feel failure will disappear. New situations. Well, by taking action, you're not scared of new situations because you're exposing yourself to the new situation and then you get used to it and your brain gets rewired. Skill development. By taking action, you develop new skills. And now I want you to show now I want to show you my framework to learning new skills and becoming confident despite feeling self-doubt, anxiety, perfectionism, procrastination, all of these negative things that are holding you back. And it's quite easy. Instead of seeing confident as a feeling, view it as an action. This was the biggest life change thing, like mind hack for me, right? A lot of people see confidence as a feeling. Oh, I want to feel confident. I have to be confident. No, confidence is an action in itself. When you do something, you are confident. Doing something that will bring you closer to your goals. And this will help you manage your anxiety more effectively. By taking action, even when you're anxious, you can start to break the cycle of fear in an action. And this comes from the book, The Confidence Gap. I was reading a story of Marson Mandela or someone like that, who was like a black guy that stood him for like um, racism and stuff like that, like against racism. And he was scared. He was so scared. He was a black guy standing up against like white people and st something like that. And he acted despite feeling anxious and he basically revolutionized something in America. Do you think he was not scared? Do you think I was not scared when I was recording my first video? Do you think I was not scared when I was cold approaching the first woman or when I went to the gym for the first time? I was scared of my mind. I couldn't sleep three nights before and I did it anyway. Because to gain confidence, you must practice. You must practice. You must practice your skills. You must practice putting yourself outside of your comfort zone and acting despite anxiety. And the first time it seems super hard, right? There's this perfection threshold, right? When you're close to like exposing yourself to your fears, you feel the biggest amount of fear, right? Right before you're about to speak to a girl. After you speak to that girl and you get rejected, your fear goes down, your anxiety goes down, your stress goes down, and you realize it doesn't matter, right? But practice alone isn't enough. You need to apply your skills in real life situations, obviously, right? I could read and practice about social skills and, you know, um, camera skills and all of that as I want, like as much as I want. I could read a hundred books on the topic, but if I don't record videos, it's, it doesn't matter. It doesn't do anything. You have to gain confidence and you must practice and then you must apply what you have learned and you do it over and over and over and over again. The only way you get confident in something is by doing it. How did I get the confidence in speaking in front of the camera? I recorded over a thousand videos in one and a half years. I spent like two hours in front of the camera every single day, speaking, practicing over and over and over and over and over again. That is the secret. And it's not even a secret, it's just common sense. The secret is that there is no secret. It's just practice. If you do something for 10, 20, 30, one year of your life, every single day for hours, do you honestly believe you can't get good at the thing? I have the belief in my mind that I can become successful in anything that I want. I could become a rapper. I could, you know, continue to make YouTube videos and help my clients reduce their anxiety. I could become a public speaker. I could become a, uh, like a, like a skateboarder, a sports athlete, um, a psychologist, whatever, a biologist, everything, a spiritual teacher. I believe I could come whatever I want. And this belief is making me so powerful because I know to become that I just have to practice. I just have to do the willing, I just have to be willing to put in the work, the boring work that is sucking, that no one else is willing to do, and I will outcompete them. And it's boring. Practicing is extremely boring. The hard work that you are avoiding, which will bring you to your goal, is boring. And that's exactly why most people fail. They look for a shortcut. They look for a quick fix. They look for a magic pill, a course that they can, you know, watch, and suddenly all of the problems are fixed. It's the hard work that everyone is avoiding that you have to do in order to become world class at something and build confidence. And after you apply those skills, you reflect on the outcomes, right? I've been recording over a thousand videos. I'm under a thousand subscribers, which is telling me that I suck pretty much <laughs> at recording videos. What did I do about that? Well, you know, I used the feedback and adjusted my approach. I constantly got better and better and better. I was like, okay, this video wasn't performing well. Well, what can I change? Yeah, the hook wasn't right. My story was shit. The presenting was bad. I was in a bad mood and I didn't really convey my message the right way. I didn't speak with conviction. My body language was off. The lighting wasn't right. My hair wasn't good. 
I was wearing real clothes. And over time, I refined it and refined it and refined it. And I'm in this process right now. And that's making me better and better and better. And you have to trust me with this. You will figure everything out along the way. I am solving problems right now that I didn't even know I had one and a half years ago when I started my YouTube journey. But before starting my YouTube journey, I was thinking about it for like three years straight. I recorded my first video when I was like 14. I wanted to be a YouTuber since I was a child. And I only started taking action one and a half years ago. I was planning and planning and planning, looking at videos, looking at books. And I found out that 99% of the stuff that I actually read and studied, I didn't even need to apply. And I have a completely different problem, right? It's like studying for exam, but like for exam at school, studying for an exam at school, but you don't even know what the topic about the exam is. And you just hope that you will somehow study the right stuff. You have to take action first. You will encounter problems along the way. You will face setbacks along the way. And you use those pa this pain to push you forward and to practice and to refine your skills and rehone your skills over and over again until you become world class. So whatever you've been putting off, do it today. Take action today. Whether that's speaking to a girl, starting a side hustle, studying for an exam, reading that book, speaking up to someone, standing in for yourself, breaking a bad habit, building a new habit, start today, no matter how small. Every time you step outside of your comfort zone, you face a risk, right? That's why it feels so uncomfortable. You're like, I don't know what will happen. But your comfort zone is death. In comfort zone, there's no growth. You only grow by exposing yourself to new things, by being under, <laughs> under tension. That's the only time when you will grow. The longer you spend outside of your comfort zone, the more you expose yourself outside of your comfort zone, the more you will grow. And when you're faced with a threat or with a perceived threat, right, you, th you think something will happen. You think you will get rejected. You think you will fail something. You think, you know, you feel failure or whatever. Your body automatically prepares you for one of two actions, to fight or flight, right? So that's a normal reaction to threats. Your amygdala gets hyperactive, right? You get adrenaline and cortisol. The stress hormones are shooting through your body and you have, the blood gets pumped into your limbs so you can run away, you can fight or you can flee. And you have to learn to get used to that response. It's a good sign. You have to reprogram your mind and instead of viewing anxiety and fear and uncertainty and, you know, stepping outside of your comfort zone as bad, you have to, you have to reprogram your mind and basically associate it with something positive. I'm feeling pain. Amazing. It means I'm growing. Kind of like David Goggins kind of style, right? And at the start, this will be extremely uncomfortable. If you do it, let's say a hundred times, just a hundred times, right? How old are you? I'm 18. Are you 15, 25, 20? Probably around like 18 to 25, right? You have another 80 years to live, maybe even longer if technology is advancing. Doing something a hundred times will make you really good at it and you won't be feared of it anymore and you will grow so much as a person. And the bigger the step, the stronger the fear. So just like start, starting with one single small thing today is a huge difference. And just think about your colleagues, think about your classmates, think about your co-workers. They're not watching a video like this. They are jerking off right now, scrolling on social media, watching porn, eating ice cream or junk food or watching Netflix. They are inside of the comfort zone. And where is it leading them? It led me to a path down to misery. When I was spending all of my time in my comfort zone, I became obese. I became deeply anxious and depressed. I became ugly. I became so lonely. I almost had a suicide attempt. Right? I was like Googling on, on, um, on Reddit how I can kill myself without feeling much pain. I was looking at different options just because I was in my comfort zone all of the time. And you only have two options in life, which is comfort now, pain later. Because the modern day world is designed to make you comfortable right now. But by indulging in all of these comfortable things, you create a hell, a future which is looking like hell for you, right? If you if you want comfort right now, you can eat, it, eat that ice cream. You screw up your hormones, your blood sugar level spikes, you become a beast, right? You maybe develop cancer. If you watch porn right now, fucks up your dopamine, makes you basically not function like a real male. Um, your testosterone gets lower, your libido goes down, you lose the natural drive that you have. If you're playing video games right now, might feel fun. It's taking away the sense of working towards something because in video games, you constantly have like this dopamine of accomplishing things. If you're watching Netflix right now, it might, might be fun, but you're just laying there. You're not moving your body. You're not expanding your mind. You're not expanding your body. You're not doing nothing. Or you take the other route of delaying, delaying the comfort and going through pain right now, but coming out strong on the other side. 
those are the only two options that you have in life. Pain now, pleasure later, or comfort now, pain later. And if you need help applying these strategies, click on the first link in the description right now to book a free coaching call with me, and I will help you to reduce your anxiety within 30 days. Thanks for watching, and please take action. And this time, I seriously mean take action. Seriously. Close off this video right now and get outside in the world and do something positive for your future self. Again, take action.